Uh, when it comes to music, we like talking rock. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. Okay, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 509 is with Larry Bone from Chokesetter. What is a long day to somebody who uses their imagination like you do? Because, I mean, is, is that the escape, the music? Um, well, actually, it wasn't music. I'm a tattoo artist, and I was working on a client for a little extra tonight because it was a bigger project than I thought. So. Oh my God, you get to do the skin art, huh? That's got to be it. That's got to be so inspiring to be able to. I mean, your art grows forward, and 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 people talk about that stuff, and it becomes part of the family. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So when you put a song together like Motorboat, I mean, first of all, I, I, one of the catchiest things, I, I right off the bat, that cowbell. Where did the idea for the cowbell come in? <laughs> um, man, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I always just thought it would be fun to use a cowbell. I've never used a cowbell in a song before. And uh, I was just like, how can we get people to you know just you know pay attention to this song because it's just like motor boater for as being as simple as it is with just you know uh the, the riffs aren't like anything like rocket science but i was like it's it's got a catch to it so how can we get some attention you know i was like you know it I goes even back to the old saturday night live deal it's like you gotta have more tempo. so it's like there it is well, that was that, that's exactly where I went. The, the very second that I heard the song for the first time, I went, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It, it's it's a it's a favorite with a lot of people and stuff. So, uh, yeah, good times. Good time. So when you're when you're, you know, bringing the music together, is it a collection of riffs that you've set to the side that all of a sudden they start, you know, uh, you know, rising like the sun, basically in the way of like, whoa, I've, I've, we've hit that point where I think I can use this riff now. Um. That's how it usually happens. Yes. Um, like Steve, the guitar player and I will work on some ideas. Maybe he had from like his archives. Um, oddly enough, I'll come up with riffs or our singer Jesse and we'll kind of like hum them actually. And like make a, like a really quick, uh, recording on our phone and send it and see if he can translate it. And he's really good about that. And then, our newest member, uh, Dustin, who's on bass, is actually a phenomenal musician. He plays guitar, drums. He's a better drummer than I am, which is what's funny. Uh, but uh, he can play guitar really well, and he's been bringing a lot of stuff to the table for new material. So we're getting it from all four branches of the band, which is really nice because we're we're hoping to have you know a lot more versatile sound. So. You, you and that bass guitarist, though, I mean, that, that to me, that you, there's got to be a collaboration and a relationship there because, I mean, the two of you go hand in hand. Yeah, um, Dustin and I have been friends for a long time, and he just joined the band recently, actually. Um, we had some issues with our old bass player, and he left us at a really bad time, hanging pretty bad, actually, to where uh, we were going to miss out on some shows. and. There was one show we got an offer for in particular um, when we were actually without a bass player. We were gonna, we got an offer to open up for I Hate God, and I was like, "All right, look, who can we get to this?" I'm like, I "Think we can talk the old guy into doing this show?" And after asking like everybody we knew in town, they were like, "Jazz Dustin," and I didn't even think about it because <laughs> Dustin was like running sound for us for some shows at the time, and he literally learned our whole set in like five days. And so he's just been with us ever since he likes the band and it just kind of worked out. It just, it felt like fate, you know? Well, I do, I do know because I mean, everybody's got to get along because when you take that van ride and, 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 or even the bus ride, you, you're all in there together and, and one person can mess it all up if the vibe is off. Yeah, definitely. For sure. So one of the, one of the main questions I really wanted to ask was, was about you, you guys actually started two years before the lockdown. How did you survive or find the strength? Because I mean, I, I was talking with Tesla uh, the week that it went down, dude, they weren't in a good place. And, and so I mean, I mean, you guys only two years old, how did you find the strength to move through this area that went totally silent for all people in entertainment? And it was a rough one because we, uh, we got together and we started writing material and then we had our first show and that was a while before COVID hit. And, uh, we came up with a set worth of material. We went to work right away, like recording that album. Um, and, uh, spent a lot of time in the studio and, uh, 
finally got it done, got it mastered. And our CD release party was actually supposed to be um, right at the beginning of April at a venue here in town that was really hard to get into if you were like a heavy band. But we managed to kind of make it happen. We were really looking forward to the show. And then uh, COVID happened and the CD, you know, we got it pressed and put it out on social media, but there were no shows. And I mean, at the time, we didn't know what was going to happen. We're thinking, well, maybe it'll just be a month. You know, maybe it'll be two months and then we can reschedule it, reschedule it. We didn't play another show for like another year and a half after that and couldn't practice together for months because we were, you know, terrified of, you know, infecting one another, even though we were locked down in our own houses forever. But uh, I think just like what kept it going was that, you know, we had each other, like we were just kind of trying to talk as friends and encourage one another. And then, um, you know, when when we finally did get together, we, you know, made some laughs about it and stuff. You know, we, there was a couple of us that were practicing with masks on and I had a really difficult time because it's not fun being a drummer wearing a mask, you know. <laughs> and I have allergies, so I was already looked at like a leper through this whole pandemic thing anyway. I sneezed one time and somebody wanted to call the cops, you know. So, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was tough for us as well. But uh, once we kind of hit our stride, we got our momentum back. And, and we could tell, you know, we are just like, we're not going to, we're not going to back down. We worked too hard for that record. We at least got to campaign it. And it uh, seems like it's paying off, you know. With that being said, um, what's your overall hope in, uh, for the future of the band and the single overall? Well, we are um, hoping that uh, we get some more representation as far as like management, uh, you know, booking agent. We'd like to get on a label. Um we're prepared to tour for you know as long as we need to i mean you know yeah we want we want the big time man we want to tour and play in front of a bunch of people it's not really about the money i mean it'd be nice to have fresh socks and a deli tray every night you know but uh, mm-hmm. as long as we're not like going broke or something like that but you know for being uh some older guys we're we're ready to do it so we're just we're kind of hoping we find a, a label and some management that believes in us and um wants to take it to stride and see what we can do for them and what they can do for us. That's amazing. So uh, what was the big inspiration behind your single and uh, what sort of conversations did you have leading up to it with you and your bandmates? Um, Motor Boater just was, I can only describe it as like just the right formula at the right time. There was no discussion about it the music just kind of came together the lead singer wrote the vocals um they were kind of rough at first so we refined them as we got closer to getting into the studio and uh i had helped him kind of collaborate the chorus because he had a good idea but i was like we need to add a little bit more so it was like the uh the lyrics just kind of came out of nowhere and yeah, I, I, I won't say Motor Butter is a total accident, but I can't say it was like pre-planned. It's not like we sit there, okay, we have to write a song about this. It was like Motor Butter literally just came out how it was supposed to. You know, in talking and getting the opportunity to be with with, with many song, singer songwriters, bands, and things like that, I always hear the stories of well, the lead singer wrote the lyrics, or the bass player wrote the lyrics, and stuff like that. Relinquishing that control to go from one to four people, my God, that's got to be a a powerful negotiation game. Yeah, I mean, um, you would think so, but we we like the idea of having four people for input because um that way i don't know i mean there's some people that in certain songs will want to do too much Mm -hmm. and then it takes one or two of us to be like no let's keep it simple and then other times be like well i like it simple and like but it needs a little bit more so it's like we kind of find that perfect medium to where we don't want to do too much but we don't want to do too little so we we go by mutual feeling to where we meet in the middle with a lot of issues in songwriting and then we're like, okay, this feels right. One of the, you guys live by a mantra that really has become a part of my, my path. I wrote this down the very second that I found out about it and I've got it sitting in front of me in front of the studio all the time. And that is being in a band, passion, privilege, relationship. That says a lot just with those three words. 
Definitely. I mean, um, we've all had the same dream since we were teenagers. You know, we started playing music and <clears throat> we want to be rock stars. You know, the, it's never died. I'm, I'm still passionate about it, you know, to this day, starting off when I was 17, 18 years old. Same with the other guys. Um, you know, the passion's always going to be there. It's a privilege to us because we've had a lot of good opportunities and had a lot of support with, you know, family, friends. And uh, we, we've known each other for years through various bands. And to be in the project we are now all together it feels right because we were a little bit more seasoned on how to act and how to, you know, deal with issues. You know, you got to understand if you're having a bad day, don't take it out on everybody. And I mean, sometimes that does take till you get in your forties to understand. You know, because there's a lot of days I'm like, look, first, I'm going to smack you upside your head with an empty bottle. You know, you can't do that. So you're more just like, polite about it i'd like to smack you upside the head with an empty box <laughs> i'm going to sit here and just listen to what you have to say so. <laughs> we got to talk about those vocals only because i'm in the the, the voiceover business um protecting those vocals because you guys really rip into that sound i mean my god and and how is it that you can still have a conversation after you've had vocals like that i mean you go from you know like a great rock song to all of a sudden you really you really force it um, Jesse is really good about being able to project from the right place. Um, I mean, he does have to be careful on overdoing it. So when we rehearse, we make sure that we don't push it past yep. a certain time, you know, and, um, we haven't done any sort of touring yet. So that's going to be another, uh, thing we're going to have to consider as well, as far as conditioning goes, like, um, seeing how many nights in a row before he needs a break or, you know, certain exercises to keep him strong. I mean, he's one of those guys, he doesn't blow out his voice, but just like anybody that, you know, does it all the time, uh, you definitely need a break. You need yep. to take care of yourself. I can and- I can so relate with that. And the reason why is because when I was in the studio and, and when they found out that I do radio commercials and stuff like that, of course, you know, the engineer's going, let me hear one of your commercials. And so I was doing this Charlotte Motor Speedway commercial. And then when it came time for recording, I couldn't do it. I couldn't use my voice at all. But I still had to pay that studio time. And that really upset me. Right, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you uh, can't get away with you know the clock unfortunately when it comes to the studio time. So, <laughs> you know, full well because we we spent a little bit on that record for sure so we're but i'm glad we did we're proud of it and everything all right you got to tell me what choke setter is because i mean first of all i think it's a great marketing name i i there's there, it's one of those things that people are going to say so where are you going to go tonight i'm gonna go see choke setter you're gonna what and and so i mean that, it's, that's the kind of thing where it really gets everybody's attention um it's funny because uh people hear that name and think of it as being like uh somewhat like aggressive you know yeah and uh, it's like it's even funnier our guitar player steve he does uh he does jujitsu on the side so a lot of people think oh it probably came from him blah 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 and i'm like truth be told a choke setter is a uh lead lumberjack that actually sets logs with chains <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it's actually it's a career for lumberjacks as a choke setter, and we got that name from an old friend of mine when I lived in New Orleans. I was playing in a band with him, uh, and we were actually doing some stoner rock and stuff, and we were trying to think of a name. It never came to fruition, of course, but uh, he was like, "We should call ourselves Choke Setter and dress up like lumberjacks." Oh, <laughs> That's a good idea, but we live in New Orleans and flannels would be really freaking hot all the time, you know. <laughs> but the name always stuck with me. And then, like, when we got this project going and we were trying to think of band names, and I don't know if you've ever been in a band or talked to anybody that's been in a band, but one of the hardest things to do is come up with a name, especially Absolutely. with four alpha minds trying to agree on something that listen to different styles of music. So you're thinking of every majestic sounding name and blah, blah, blah. And we're all just like, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. That's stupid. Even ones I came up with. And finally, <laughs> like, let me throw this out there. And everybody kind of bit on it. And uh, that's how it happened. So 
See, that's that's the part of the music journey that so many of today's listeners don't get because there's no inside sleeve to the album anymore. And so and if you if you Google anybody, it's it's like you get you get the you know the headlines punch, but you don't get the real in depth story of what's going on. Yeah, no, that's that's very true. Um that's that's one thing you never know unless you ask one of the band members or you get to hear their story through, uh, you know, publications or, you know, something like this. So it's, that's kind of nice because it seems like, you know, you start listening to a new band and you want to make your own assumptions of, of what this means or where this came from. And then when you finally hear the story, you're like, Oh yeah, that literally was not what I was picturing at all. It's like, how did you get this off the back of a, you know, a Captain Crunch box? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's always good to, to hear the trivia side of the, of the band, for sure. Is is there a part of the country that you guys w- would like to travel to, to uh, ba- mainly because, I mean, this because this is the kind of performer I am. I want to go there because I want to try the food, and then and then I'll go rock it out. Um, I do a lot of traveling tattooing so there's been a lot of places i've been where you know the cuisine hasn't you know i I definitely i eat wherever i go when i'm a foodie you know i'm I'm not a small person so you know of course anywhere i go for work or a tattoo convention i'm always like oh man i gotta find this place and this kind of food see what it's famous for blah 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 so um as far as like touring for cuisine I, i wouldn't say that i mean as far as like maybe crowds go i definitely would like to hit California yeah. and Texas for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, because they those people get it. They get the festivals, man, and they and they attend those festivals. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. So, are you going to approach MTV as as a rock star from Choke Setter and and say, "Look, man, I also do uh, Ink. Uh, I think you should do a TV show on me. Just follow me around the country." No, to be honest with you, I would not want to be on TV. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of friends on Ink Master and stuff, and I was happy for them when they joined and did it. And, uh, you know, I got them a lot of exposure. But I also know what comes with yeah. that is just constant criticism. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be pigeonholed into doing one certain kind of thing my whole life. And then there's always just going to be those critics that think they know something, you know, and it's like, it's one thing if someone critiques your music because they don't like your band, it's like, Oh, okay. No big deal. It's like somebody else will listen to it. Somebody else will get it. But my artwork, it's a little different because it's very personal to me and I've been doing it my whole life. So the last thing I need is months and months and years and years of somebody going, well, you could have done that to tattoo better. I yeah. I don't know why you didn't do this. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Who are you? You know, so <laughs> I'll, I'll avoid the TV thing as much as possible. <laughs> so as, as that tattoo artist, is the tramp stamp finally over? Um, I have not done one in a long time, but I really do miss them because the ones that people are getting now, they're just not, uh, man, don't get me started. (laughs) 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 I'm just sitting there going like, what the heck is going on here? So yeah, yeah, who knows? (laughs) I don't know can't even answer that (laughs) (laughs) so where can listeners go to give you guys lots of love and support and stuff like that because i mean it's time that people do start following you guys and and you know and 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 streaming is where you know they call it the new record store and so that's what i want people to find i want them to find you and then and then start following you well you can we're on all streaming platforms everything from spotify to uh pandora to youtube to bandcamp to reverb nation just about everything you can think of, we are on there. So you can just search for our name, Choke Setter, one word. Um, I would love it if people looked us up on Facebook, gave us a like. Instagram following is always a plus as well. Um, uh, our YouTube, you know, we've got the video from Motor Boater up there. So yep. It would be great if people went and checked it out. Um, yeah, I mean, social media, it's it's new for us because we're older guys and there's no record stores anymore. So it's like promote, promote, promote. And we're all just kind of trying to figure this out day by day, one day at a time. Well, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future there, Mr. Larry Bone, because the door is always going to be open for you. Please keep, keep us in mind with, you know, it, we're, we're just trying to work our butts off like everybody else. That's for sure. But that's what rock is all about, man. Yes, I agree. I agree. So <laughs> until this 
too old to be worked. <laughs> I know that's totally wrong. So, you know, my listeners, no, don't, don't go there. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this question because you are into ink and you have the passion for that. And you're really into music. If, 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 and parents would always say this, if you had to give up one of them, which one would it be? Oh, you couldn't do it. No, I couldn't. I know. Yeah. No, they, they, they go hand in hand. I mean, because I do all the artwork for the band and for the t-shirts and stuff and the merch and I, I couldn't do one without the other. Yep. It, it's, it defines who I am with, without both or yeah, I wouldn't be who I am. So and, uh, they, they, I, I can't answer that question. It's just not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Okay. Definitely. Thank you very, very much for having me. You bet. You be brilliant tonight, okay? I will. You do the same. Thank you.